Disney Channel. Ideas for the present, dreams for the future. Your imagination holds the key. Walt Disney once said, the era we live in is a dream come true. But there are still plenty of avenues to explore. The Disney Channel invites you to join us now and imagine. What do all these items have in common? Their brains. They all do their thinking on microchips. The microchip has a role in all of our lives. It's in our wristwatches, our TVs, our calculators, our cars. It's in our kitchens, our offices and rec rooms. It's even in the traffic light on the corner. If what's in here were large enough to be seen, it would fill up this entire room. At its simplest, the microchip is electronic circuitry, minuscule switches that work together to convey information by turning on and off, in much the same way as a telegraph operator's Morse code. This amazing slow motion film shows electrical signals carrying a calculation. The most powerful chips called microprocessors are actually mini computers that employ memory and logic to make decisions. John Schott is a senior research associate in the Integrated Circuits Lab at Stanford University. How does a microchip work? The basic component of a microchip is a transistor. This is an example of a transistor that you might have seen in the 1960s, early 60s and uh, that was actually preceded by the vacuum tube. All of these elements, the transistor, the tube, and now the microchip, are basically combinations of electronic switches. And in this case, this represents one electronic switch that was used in the 50s, whereas the modern microchip, which we see right here, and an enlargement right out here, consists of maybe 40,000, 50,000 transistors in a single small area of silicon. The key to the chip's power is its size. The circuitry is packed together so closely that signals can travel near the speed of light. Under a microscope, the chip's surface looks like a big city. Bits of information in the form of electrical on-off signals travel through the streets of this complex city with great ease. Their arrivals and departures at various destinations translate into calculations, logic, and memory, which are then sent out to run your video game or digital watch. And this portion of the chip is where the instructions driving the computer are actually stored. That tells the computer that the next thing we want to do is to add two numbers, for example. Now, the actual addition will take place over in this part of the chip. But the first thing we need to know is what two numbers are going to be added. The computer then is instructed to fetch numbers from the memory locations, possibly here and here. When the process begins, these numbers would be an awful lot like highways on a city map. They would be routed over to the adder region. They would be added together. And then the, the computer will then be instructed to either put that signal out to the pads to communicate to the outside world, namely a display, for example, if it was your calculator. Or it might just store that number in another location, maybe over here, for example, by sending it down the bus and then go back and say, now what's my next instruction? All of this activity is taking place inside a chip that is small enough to be carried away in an ant's mouth. This powerful brain makes these complicated thoughts millions of times a second. The blink of an eye. But the amazing microchip did not design itself. This complex wonder is a product of man's ingenuity and creativity. It all starts out with someone's idea. They have a concept that they would like to try out, and they uh, begin to work on that in an experimental phase. 
most of these larger designs like we're doing now really take a team of engineers and so the design has to be partitioned so that a team can assemble the entire project effectively. Now, of course, the ultimate idea is to get this concept built in silicon, and that requires laying out the individual transistors, designing them so that they all function in concert. And in the early days, that was all done manually with layouts as we have in the back wall here, where a person would lay out circuits of 10, 50, 100 transistors complexity. But of course, that soon became overly complex. And now we use interactive computer graphics, such as we see here, to help us convert an idea into the geometry that will ultimately embody in the silicon. The finished design map of the chip is then reduced and transferred to a glass plate, much like the negative for a photograph. It is this plate process. Now this is the clean room where we're going to begin the fabrication process. All of the air in here is very specially filtered because the integrated circuits will be damaged by particles falling on. And in fact, each of us emits maybe a million particles every minute. So we have to wear this very special protective clothing so that we don't harm the integrated circuits. What does a dust particle do to it? Well, it can destroy an individual transistor, and on a big integrated circuit, if we destroy very many of those, and install it in its machine so that it will project an image. integrated circuit wafer. Now this machine is capable of very precisely aligning the mass and exposing it very much like a photographic process. And we can see that it in fact is doing that at this time. Now that the microchip pattern has been imprinted on the silicon wafer, it goes through a series of etching treatments. Each treatment carves out layer after layer of the pattern. Finally, the complete pattern is revealed. Thousands of transistors have been formed. The microchip is complete. Now, when we completed that process, we would end up with a wafer such as the one here, where we have maybe 100 circuits, each of them containing 40,000 transistors. Is that then ready to go into a computer or a wristwatch or whatever? Well, very close to that. We would first take it to the testing area where each of those chips is electrically tested to make sure that it's functional. We would cut up the functional chips and place them in packages, which can then be put in a calculator, a wristwatch, or a computer. For the last two decades, engineers have been able to roughly double the number of components on a chip by making them smaller. More components, more power. That means that in the near future, we can expect technological miracles that prior to now were only possible through science fiction fantasies. Electronic hearing for the deaf, sight for the blind, personal robots that can walk, talk, and reason. An amazing variety of tools to free the human mind to think and create. An example of a microscopic world that will completely change our lives. The Disney Channel.